Hello, my name is Meg and in this video we will be talking about how you can use Minecraft Education Edition in your languages classroom to address the Australian curriculum. The Australian curriculum for languages covers a range of learning sequences for a wide variety of different languages. Uh, generally, each school would offer at least one language other than English, possibly more. Uh, for each of these uh, languages, or for a majority of the languages, there'll be a learning sequence from F foundation or pre-primary through to year 10, and also year 7 to 10, assuming that students start learning the language for the first time in year 7. Uh, some of the languages uh, have alternatives to this, depending on a student's exposure to the language at home. So you can see for Chinese, uh, Auslan and Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages, there are different sequences of learning for students uh, for whom that's their first language. So that's uh, pretty much the only language spoken at home. For Chinese, it's a background language if students have some exposure to it, but perhaps it's not their only language spoken at home. And for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages, it could be um, under language revival where custodians or owners of the language are trying to revive its use. So the different sequences just offer um, guidance around the different levels of expectations of student achievement, um, depending on their circumstances. Just a side note, the classical languages, so that's classical Greek and Latin, are only offered at a high school level. The languages curriculum for all of the different languages is split into two strands. The first strand is about communicating and the skills related to that. The second strand is understanding and this brings in understanding about the language, its um, conventions and also the culture uh, where the language originated. Diving a bit deeper into the first strand, we'll have a look at communicating and how we can use Minecraft Education Edition to tap into the following skills. So in communicating, uh, the, the curriculum is aiming to get students socialising and talking about themselves, their likes, their dislikes, asking basic questions, call and response um, with each other, both orally and written. Uh, in information, it's all about looking at informative texts both written, um, being able to present that information orally, um, but also perhaps in a video. Creating is about creating stories, drama, music uh, in the target language. Uh, translating is moving between English and the target language, perhaps even creating bilingual uh, resources such as a menu for a pretend restaurant. And reflecting is noticing the difference between our culture and language and the target culture and language. So for the communicating strand of the so for the communicating strand of the languages curriculum, I wanted to showcase a few features and items within Minecraft that could be useful uh, for you and your students in learning to communicate in another language and translating between languages. So the first, very first feature I want to show you before you even enter the game is if you click on settings, we can change the language of the game as a whole. Um, so under the settings menu, we're going to scroll down until we see language and click on language. Now it will be in the default language for your computer system, but there are many languages here to choose from. So you could change um, your whole Minecraft menu into Italian if Italian is what you are learning. And just having the whole game <laughs> in another language will, will help expose your students to it more and help um, get them to start using the language in context a little bit more. Um, so you can see everything um, that can be translated uh, has been translated and you could ask your students to use the game with those settings switched over to the target language. I'm just going to enter a basic creative world uh, to show you some items that are useful for uh, learning new languages. So. First off, I wanted to show you three items that are unique to Education Edition. So in 
uh, regular Minecraft, there is an item called the sign. Uh, the downside of the sign being uh, it's very small and once you place it, you have to write on it and then you cannot, you can no longer edit that text. Uh, so that is the sign, which you can still use, uh, but Education Edition also has a slate, a poster and a board, which is very large. And so the difference between uh, the sign and these items is that these items can be edited again and again without um, having to destroy them. And the owner or the person who places the item can choose to keep it locked so that other users within the world cannot edit the text, which is good for uh, when you have, uh, let's say, a large board full of instructions for students on what to do once they enter the world. Keeping that locked is a good idea. Uh, however, if you wanted students to contribute to something by translating a piece of text, you can unlock it so that anybody can come along and edit the text on here. And that way you could have them working together on the same piece of text. And, and uh, yeah, so that is the slate uh, poster and board. The other items that we can do that involve text and writing are um, the book and quill. And I just wanted to show you in the menu what that looks like. So when I look up book, there are quite a few enchanted books. These are for when you're doing combat, which we're not focusing on in this video. Uh, but there's book and quill, book and a bookshelf. And the one uh, we're going to focus on is the book and quill. So the book and quill essentially gives us a book that we can edit. Uh, so you can type in uh, you could ask students to record or describe their adventures within Minecraft or record information uh, based on the activity that you're doing in class, uh, maybe about their likes and dislikes. Uh, I like horses because you can ride on them. And the beauty about the book and quill is once we sign it, uh, you it can no longer be edited. Um, and we can give it a title, Italian animals, sign and close. Now I can no longer edit the text in this, but I can uh, place it on this item here called the lectern, I think. <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah, the lectern here. And placing the book on the lectern means that everyone else in the world can now come and read my book without being able to edit it. I can also, once it's signed, I can also export uh, the book as a PDF so students can then um, read and use this text later on outside of the game. Or you could use it as evidence uh, of learning for an assessment by exporting it and getting them to email you the PDF. The other great thing about books, and you don't need to sign it to use this feature, is the immersive reader feature here, which is built in across a a bunch of different Microsoft products, but is also available in Minecraft, is um, the immersive reader reads out loud. Page one of two. Hello. By Angiorno. Yokoso. I like horses because you can ride on them. As you will have noticed, when it comes to foreign words, especially if, the, if you're using the sort of um, same alphabet as Eng as the English language, um, it does not get the pronunciation right. So you could use that uh, to ask students to describe how that pronunciation is wrong, um, which is often a really good way to help um, tap into that concept of pronunciation and getting them to recognize the wrong pronunciation and correct it with the correct pronunciation. Now, to get around that issue, what we can do in Immersive Reader is we can start doing some translation. So let's say I want to translate horse. Um, when we click on it, it will, if it can, it will give you a picture of what the word is to help struggling readers. But what we can also do under reading preferences, the book symbol here, we can ask it to translate some of the words into a whole bunch of different languages here. So. Um, I've just chosen Italian for the sake of showing you what it is like. And when I click on horse, I can listen to that word. Horses. In, in English and Italian. E 
and cavalli because cavalcare ride and you'll notice now the pronunciation is correct because we're converting to Italian. So if I go back to Bion Giorno, sorry, my pronunciation is not very good today. Bion Giorno. Bion Giorno. So you can ask students to then compare and contrast um, after having a guess. And so this feature is within the Immersive Reader add-on. We cannot use Immersive Reader on the boards and posters and slates, unfortunately, but you can use them um, on the book and quill or any other books lying around within Minecraft. So this is a really, really good feature to target the oral uh, speaking skills within the languages, um, but also the translating and writing skills. So uh, the other sort of book you can see I've got here, it's not, um, this one is a little bit different. So this one is called portfolio and what this one does is it captures uh, for any photos that we take with the camera so you might like to have students perhaps let's say we go try and take a photo of this cow we right click <laughs> to place the camera and right click the camera and a short timer oh no <laughs> cow come back <laughs> okay I didn't quite get the perfect photo but to find my photo I'd right click with the portfolio in my inventory and I could caption it with the Italian word for cow, except I don't know it. So um, I'm going to click on Immersive Reader and look it up. So cow. Vacca. Vacca. Okay, so I could go back and correct and write vacca. So I can also export this portfolio as a PDF. So it will contain the images and the text or subtitles underneath the image. So that is our portfolio. So one more item I'd like to show you for languages is the spawn NPC egg, which is this rainbow egg here. So as well as a bunch of animals, um, you can also create non NPCs or non player characters. Now, if you're clicking, right clicking and nothing is happening, well, that's because uh, we need to have the right settings. So first of all, usually only the host of the world will be able to create NPCs. Um, the other setting that you may need to change if you find it's not working is a setting called world builder. So to turn that on and off, we press enter. Uh, forward slash and WB is the shortcut for world builder. So I'm going to change that to true and then I should be able to create non-player characters. Now these characters are great for setting up stories uh, and in, as, or as instruction givers and they're great because we can change their appearance so you can have different sort of characters or even just make it sort of a computer terminal. Um, to fit in with whatever your war story might be and once we've done that we can then change their name uh, you can have this in another language if you like and then you can edit their dialogue so you could have uh, the dialogue in your target language forcing students to translate to figure out what their quest is or what's happening in the world or you could uh, alternatively have students creating a setting or a story and have students creating the NPCs and having the students write um, in their target language. Um, oops, not Biao, <laughs> Chao. Um, the, the dialogue for their characters. Uh, and you can plan out that text prior to using the game. You don't have to do it on the spot. Um, the other thing you can do with NPCs if you want to get a bit more complicated, I won't go too much into it right now, but it is possible to have um, NPCs link to external resources. So if you had a website or um, that offers translation or, or maybe it's like flashcards of your target words that you're learning, you could add a link to that uh, so that the NPC shows that link to the students. Um, the other thing you can do is you can add commands so that uh, when students approach the NPC, perhaps they gift them an item or something like that. So there's a lot you can do with NPCs and they're really good for setting up um, storylines and uh, text-based uh, activities. 
So there's some of the items and features that you can use to help engage students in using their language skills and translation skills within the world of Minecraft and then having that immersive reader and that automatic sort of translation there available as a backup or if students want to check their work is also um, another great tool. So the understanding strand of the languages curriculum really taps into the language conventions, so pronunciation, grammar, um, things like how the texts are presented. So in Asian texts that you might be reading vertically or from right to left instead of left to right, uh, it, which is done in English. Uh, there might uh, also be dialect differences, uh, so that would come under language variation and change. And the role of language in culture and then comparing that to uh, a student's own language and culture and addressing stereotypes and talking about diversity and being more understanding of differences. So I, I didn't have any particular objects or tools within Minecraft that I could think of to address this second strand, but I thought this second strand came together really nicely with some of the example lessons and worlds that are available on uh, the Minecraft edition website. So rather than um, spend a segment specifically looking at the second strand. I thought we'd jump straight into the example lessons and worlds and I can show you how you can use some of those to address uh, the culture aspect of languages. So there are two ways you can access the existing Minecraft worlds and lessons. The first way is to go onto the Minecraft Education Edition website. Uh, you can search for your topic or just browse the lessons there and download from uh, all the resources you need, including the world file directly from the website. If you do download from the website to get the world into your game, all you need to do is click on import, find the file that has your world in it and press open. Otherwise, the other way is to click uh, from the Minecraft menu, click on View Library, uh, click on Lessons, and then Language Arts. So th uh, this first one here has a bunch of islands based around certain literature texts. So for example, if we visit Treasure Island, um, well actually there's four different activities here. So maybe we look at the boat adventure, you'll see a description about the world roughly how long it will take and the learning objectives. All you need to do is click on create world to download the world and go into it. So let's have a quick look. Usually the worlds when you first um, jump in there'll be a board or a sign or, or an NPC with instructions on what to do next and this one has a book uh, within the treasure chest. So. Uh, the worlds may be on different settings, so this one is not on creative mode, so we cannot fly. And you can see whoops, the pirate ship or the ship over here. So I'll just leave this world and we can have a look at the other lessons for language arts. So in the additional lessons, you can see there are lots of different lessons um, for you to have a look at here. And although they might, they may be based around literacy, uh, the literacy or, or English, I guess, based lessons are really, really easy to adapt to language based lessons by changing um, the tasks instead of using English for the task um, to using the target language for the task. For example, um, there's one here about looking at an underwater environment and a submarine and perhaps you're having students um, describe or write about their adventures or their experience in your target language. So you can see here there's some pretty amazing builds and worlds that you can access. Uh, so don't feel pressured to create something like this on your own do go and explore and use what's out there for yourself um, there are some also for languages although it's not listed under language arts um, if you have a look under history and culture for assessing that second strand of the languages curriculum in the Australian curriculum um, there are some really great builds around other cultures. So here, if we're looking at Italian, there's a build that replicates Florence. So this would be a really, really good map and world 
to have a look at if we're doing Italian because we're we can now use this world to start talking about culture and how the city differs from the city that you live in and um, and Australian cities and so on and so forth so there's some great uh, worlds out there under history and culture as well that are worth checking out even though they're not listed as being uh, language arts so you could essentially use this to do a little virtual field trip to Florence um, as part of your languages lesson and you could uh, do a guided tour together in the same world um, of the city of Florence and this this one looks huge this map it looks amazing so there's definitely a lot there to check out um, just keep an open mind in terms of looking in the other subject areas if you're looking for maps that can um, address the culture side of the languages curriculum. Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully it has provided you with some ideas and inspiration for how you can get started with using Minecraft Education Edition in your languages classes. Thanks.